Welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero, everybody. The Under the Sea Arctic Survival Game that puts you against the element in an Arctic environment. Anyway, we're going to look at about finding the sea truck fragment. In all Subnautica games, it's all about getting around and getting around safely. Up until this point, I have been making do with the good old sea glide, but now it's time to get something a little bit more versatile. And the sea truck certainly does that. Given the fact the sea truck is what we call a quintessential item, finding these pieces should relatively be easy, and it is. We're going to start off, as you've seen from the beginning of the video, from good old Rocket Island. And from Rocket Island in the jetty, we're going to jump in and get cracking and have a good scout round and see what fragments we can, we can get. And there are quite a few fragments around here. Now, sea truck fragments typically manifest themselves like the graphic I've put on the screen. A bit of wreckage. They're not all like this, but generally they are. You'll know it when you're going to see it. And as you can see, I've put beacons all around marking out the sea truck fragments on this video. But typically, jump off the jetty, get into the shallows, run by those vents, and get looking. So why is the sea truck? Well, the sea truck is a modular undersea vehicle. Now, if you remember, we had the old um, sea moth in original Subnautica. This isn't it. This isn't it at all. In fact, I wouldn't mind a good sea moth every now and again. It basically consists of a small cab unit, which is what you get first off and what we're going to build initially, to which you can then attach various modules that then can be added additional functionality. An unmodified sea truck has a crush depth of only 150 meters, but you can increase that by outfitting it with depth modules and stuff, just like you did with the old sea moth before. Now it's quite an adaptable vehicle, um, and it can be a mini sub to a mobile sea base. With the ability to detach its front section, it allows the player to haul resources and equipment to areas of interest, and whatever those areas of interest should be. Now, it does require energy to function, um, sockets for two power cells on the top of the cab module. The vehicle has its own oxygen supply, which is really good when you're going looking for some of the other items. Everyone will keep going back and forth to the surface. Um, the sea truck cabin can be docked in the moon pool to recharge. When docking, all modules automatically detach to allow the cabin to enter the moon pool. And we haven't found the moon pool yet, but stay tuned, because we will very soon. Um, the player that's you, that is, can also manually detach the modules at any time by either going to the roof of a module and pulling it away or pulling the lever on the left-hand side of the cab. Now, just like the sea moth in the original Subnautica, the sea truck has a health meter, and when it reaches zero, it will explode. Same if you exceed your maximum depth. It'll also explode as well. Now, again, in Subnautica Below Zero, if you scan items and you've already unlocked that blueprint, you will get two parts of titanium. Okay, no dramas there. Now, where are we going to find these? The purple plumes, these lovely things by the island. There's a few fragments round by the escape pod as well. So be aware, keep a weather eye out, and you will find them. No doubt at all. And also by looking at what I've done in this video, it's pretty straightforward to follow as well for how I'm, um, how I'm swimming around. So off the jetty, effectively turn left. Swim around and you will come through it. Pay particular attention to the lower nooks and crannies. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then it's a case of once you have found all the, the fragments for your sea truck, you're going to have to go away and build it then. And for that, you're going to need a mobile vehicle station. And the twisty bridges and kelp forest can give you these blueprints as well. Check out my video on how to build the mobile vehicle bay on YouTube and also on the channel. So I've built one of these as you can see it's just off into the distance and it's going to be a case then taking my good old blueprints to go and build this sea truck and we'll be greeted with a great little um, animation of it being built by the drone. So we're going to climb aboard. Let's see what we need. Okay so there it is vehicles. We need titanium ingots that's made by combining multiple items of titanium, an advanced wiring kit, glass, lead, and a power cell. Well, I have all of these in my base. So let's go get them. We're back. Select the items. Onto vehicles. There's the sea truck. And let's get it built. And you can see the drones go away and do their busy work 
and build me a sea truck. Go on drones, off you go. And there it is, they're building it, it's in the air. We're gonna get that real gratifying splash as the vehicle then enters the water. There we go. And splash, there it is. Yes folks, I now have a sea truck. I am now mobile, I have my own oxygen supply. All I gotta do is keep it charged. I'm very interested as well to get some additional items for it. So there you have it. That's the sea truck, everybody. Um, where to find all the fragments? Go to the Rocket Island, go to the jetty, look towards your escape pod, turn left, jump off. They're all down there. Follow the video to see where those particular items are. A great little item, a great little thing. I'm going to enjoy driving that around now. And I'm off to go and go to the sea monkey nest and go and find some more items so I can get around and progress with this game. So, I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. This has been the good old sea truck video for Subnautica Below Zero. See you soon in the next video. Welcome aboard, Captain.